Hi, my name is Alexandre Bourgin. I work at 10scores.com with my two great partners over there. And uh, I've um, given uh, part of my code to type fast uh, to Rory for the previous presentation, but I'll put mine on debug mode. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that I'll try to do it fast, but you know, it might have some errors. So this presentation is about Ansible, which is a great deployment solution. It's written in Python. We're going to have some Python code, but it's really some, uh, it, it tries to be language agnostic. So this is, who knows uh, Puppet? Raise your hand if you know Puppet. Raise your hand if you know Chef. CF Engine, okay? It's of that category. It's to do deployment in machines and, uh, or instances or servers, okay? Things like that. <clears throat> it's uh, very cool. It's written by the guy named um, M.P. Dehan, which wrote Cobbler. And he worked at Puppet Labs, went out of there, and wrote something awesome, okay? That's Ansible. So written in Python, the only dependency you have on your machine is actually Python YAML and Python Jinja for the templates. And it runs in a push mode, on the contrary of uh, uh, Puppet. So it pushes through SSH, so you don't need to deploy any, another PKI, through SSH. And the only dependencies on the nodes is actually Python itself, because it's going to push the modules, execute them, and interact using JSON. So it's completely uh, language independent in the sense how the, the modules are written. Okay? So we're going to try to go that. It's going to be a demo. And uh, we're going to use... Okay, if you have any question, you stop me. And I've named Rory, if he doesn't understand, he screams and say, I don't understand, okay? So you, you, you have a responsibility, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so the installation, so I'm going to go in Zoo, that's where we're going to work. And we normally get cloned, but I'm going to copy the Ansible checkout. Okay, here. Whoops. Uh, okay, move. Yes, okay, I have Ansible checkout. So I, I have Git clone, that's what I'd get. And that's mostly all I need to have Ansible installed on my machine, okay? And I would need, though, to have uh, Python YAML and Python Jinja as a dependency. Those two things, if we want to speed up things and deploy to a lot more servers faster, but we won't get into that. They're not required at, uh, for starter. And then that's how we'll, we'll um, activate. It's a simple environment. It'll change the path, and that'll activate the Ansible um, environment, okay? So if we try that, it would be like Ansible checkout, hacking, and setup. And then we'd have Ansible with all their executables, okay? So Ansible is to develop and uh, test modules. Ansible playbook is what you use to deploy. The playbook is like the chef rest, uh, cookbook thing, or puppet uh, smoosh, I don't remember. So playbook is going to run thing. You can reverse the pattern with Ansible pull. We're not going to go into that today, okay? So to start, we're going to create, actually I'm going to Copy the little uh, activate script here. Vim? No. <clears throat> so that's a little script we can use to set the host file. And that host file is our inventory. That's where we have our list of servers. And we can even have a script that goes and pulls that from EC2. And then you'll have variables and all the hosts set uh, in the inventory. Then we activate. We change the PS. And we'll load the insecure private. I'm going to use Vagrant just to provision the, the, the virtual machine, OK? Oops. Not used to that one. OK. And I have a little gra Vagrant file here. The only thing I need, shoot, see, there's a debug mode here. So I change precise, and I have downloaded that. So I can just use Vagrant up. The machine launches. <coughs> and uh, so it launches a new machine uh, plane. So we can test a lot of iteration of our Ansible. We're not going to do that that much today. OK. But, and now it's booting. It's going to forward port 2222 on localhost. I can connect to it. OK, and we're going to write our first host file. Um, OK, zoo hosts. And so the host file, we're going to call that moo nodes, OK? Or no, zoo nodes, so that it's better. And the machine is going to be here. And I can set vi variables, one, two, three, boo. And also, I'll want to have a special SSH port variable that will tell, well, that machine you need to connect on that port. OK, that's used internally. So we could use this way, or we could define variables for that group in vars, OK? And that way, we'd, have, we'd be able to connect to, the, to that machine, everyone, all, all that group, to, through port 2222. OK? Now, next thing, we want a playbook. That's the simplest thing you can get. The playbook, we're going to call zoo knows a playbook. You don't need the playbook uh, extension. It's just that to, dis to di differentiate. OK, so an empty, um, that's good. OK, so here we're going to specify zoo nodes. 
That means this play here, you see this, uh, that's YAML. Who doesn't know YAML syntax? OK, good. You go read about it. So <clears throat> the dash, that means that there's a list. This is the first play, which is an ordered sequence of tasks that are going to be run to ensure in, a de in an idempotent way what's going to be on the remote server. So we're going to define host here. <clears throat> we're going to say we want to execute sudo but connect as vagrant user. OK? And we're going to have a series of tasks here. First one, let's say write to slash TMP, and the action will be shell echo boo. And let's say I want to push there my var. A lot of oo oo stuff, huh? So that's what we have here, my var. And that's going to all bubble up and stack uh, if you have variables attached to the instance, and then to the group, and then to other variables you'll gather all the way. And that will be usable inside your playbook. But it's all managed from the central node, which pushes action over there. OK, and what do we want to do right now? Ansible playbook and zoo nodes. Do you think it's going to work? Password? Le password, what are you talking about? OK, so <coughs> uh, zoo nodes, zoo nodes, that's not work. See, it changed one thing, and then it's out. Um, so let me show you. We can here connect, whoops, zoo vagrant SSH. Now we're in the box, OK? If you go to slash TMP, there's nothing there. <coughs> Play recap. Oh, uh, wait a minute there. Sorry. Sorry. So, so you define you, you define a host called Zoo Nodes. Yep. And then you pass and and you pass the playbook in, and da, 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 sorry, you define a host <laughs> called Zoo Nodes. You pass the playbook in, and it identifies no. you have the host Zoo Nodes, and it reads the playbook to figure out what no to do with the Zoo smash. Nodes. Ansible playbook. Sorry, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it. No. This. I didn't I activate, oh, I didn't activate the thing. So I'm going to activate it so actually it'll use the host file in the current directory. Otherwise, it uses uh, DOS, uh, Ansible. You can ha have slash etc slash Ansible. So right now, I'm going to use the current host. Sorry for that. <coughs> OK? So this is going to run, connect to the first step. It's going to gather facts, then run the task, write the thing over there, and then? So you'll see that. We're going to get into that. So first step, see, we didn't specify anything for gathering facts. It's implied. We can disable that by going to the, the, the playbook here and say gather facts false. This way, next time, it's not going to be ran. And <coughs> see that task, it wrote change because it returned that it did a modification. Okay? But let's look at that gather change step. It's actually a, very, a simple step. Um, that's um, so zoo node. That's how we, we uh, test one module. That gather step step, gather fact step is the setup module, OK? And we're going to tell on the command line to use sudo and use vagrant because we're not going through the playbook here. We're testing the module directly. And that'll return, see, it'll connect to the machine, run the setup module, and that'll return a series of facts. See, that's the protocol. Anything, any module that returns things is going to be JSON. And the specific thing about Ansible facts is that it's going to add all these variables to the inventory so that you can use that in every, in every place. You can use them in some variables, in templates you're going to deploy. And uh, so let's say we want to modify. So all these variables are there. And you have also the information about the module. Did it change something or not? That's how you ensure it in potency, OK? So each module will verify things. Does it need to change anything? It'll change and return. It has changed. Otherwise, it'll say nothing's changed. OK. So what we could do here, we could have another step and say, uh, write MOTD and action. Let's say we'll say template. So recently, we could get rid off of the action, because you notice here shell is actually the module name, and the rest of the parameters. So we can, nowadays, use shell directly here. Okay, So we can take out action, just so you're, you're not confused when you see other things. Okay, So SRC is going to be template, and MOTD and destination is going to be ATC and MOTD. Got it? Templates, we're going to create that little file here. Make the directory templates, and we could say welcome to our machine, and then we'll we will have um, whew, <laughs> many things here. Okay, so <clears throat> let's say we'll have see we have in the in the list um, all sorts of like Ansible LSB. That's what normally we get in. Uh, uh, MOTD, right? The, name, the number of the machine. We want to keep those information because they're important. So we're going to fetch them and inject them back into the, the MOTD. So Ansible LSB. So note here, this is Jinja2 simply. So use the semantics of uh, Jinja2. OK, and Ansible system, and then Ansible, whoops, kernel, and then 
Ansible, what is that architecture? Okay, you got that? So uh, you're being controlled by Ansible. Okay, problem, call Alex. Okay, something like that. <coughs> okay, and then we're gonna push that. Did I add the step in the, yes. So normally that template thing is gonna run it as a template, inject variables, blah, 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 parse them, and then push that over there. And what if I look at, uh, I run it the first time, Oop, not this one. So see, that's bad, oh, typo. LSB is undefined. Oh, you know why? I disabled gather facts. So it doesn't go and grab those variables and inject them. So if I take that out, it'll go gather the facts, and then those variables are be, uh, will, will be available to be injected to the, tem the template, okay? So you might have those kind of dependencies. Run that, it says change for MOTD. What if I log out and log back in? See, welcome, you're being controlled, problem, Alex. Okay, we have these things, and that'll reflect the information from that particular machine. Got it? If I run that again, Next time, see MOTD changed, no, it's okay. It verified, check MD, uh, MD5 hash on both sides. I don't need to upload, so it didn't transfer anything. Okay, so that's where you get the idempotency. <coughs> Have any questions? Uh, the pseudo password, you didn't supply the pseudo password. No, there's no pseudo password, okay. <laughs> so he was asking, wh where's the pseudo password? That Vagrant machine has admin privileges, sudo gives you, just like Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu machines on EC2, you don't have to provide a password. Otherwise, we'd be using SSH keys instead. We're not gonna use that password patching thing. You can, uh, can you set the ownership and permissions of the yeah, file? Yeah, of course. So the template here, if I show you the Ansible module template, it, it has uh, all those things and also the file, which you can set with uh, permissions and everything. And it, it'll ensure, even the file hasn't changed, it'll ensure the permission with chmod, so it looks like that, chmod, and then uh, owner, and then all those things, okay? So you can set those things and they'll be fixed. And you, so that would be done with most especially file, but template supports that as a kind of fallback. It extends the thing, okay? So no more questions right now? <coughs> yeah, after, sorry. <laughs> so we'll have, like, just show you NTP. Uh, we'll say action PKG NTP, and we'll tell the state here. And then action service we'll say name NTP, that's how, how we specify things, enabled, yes, state started, whoops. And then we'd have, for example, uh, name create abrogé user, and we have user, and we say name abrogé, and over here we could authorize, authorized, whoosh. See, it's a demo, it's a beta version of his software. Yeah, okay, we'll check that, okay. So abogé, and we'll say the key here, we can specify that special hoo-ha, and it'll go and grab the file on the disk, it'll push <coughs> that as a parameter, just if I typed it in here, okay? So it's gonna read it, and what do you think is gonna work? I'm not sure, let's try that. Name is not required? Nope, so name is for uh, documentation purpose. You're not, if you don't put a name, it's gonna use the full line, so I suggest you space that out a little bit, because people are gonna need to maintain that, and say, give out your intention. That person might be you, huh? Now remember. <laughs> so that'll install NTP, it'll use the APT thing and <coughs> send everything there. So can I go and SSH to that local machine? It was a blank machine, so obviously it didn't have that. Port 2222. See, I can log in right now and, and I'm being controlled, okay? And the uh, NTP, <coughs> see, it's running. Great, okay, <coughs> so next step, any questions? But that apt command, that's built into Ansible? Yeah, so those things are, 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 are built in. The only dependency on the node part I said it was Python. That's f if you want to use the standard modules. Otherwise, you can have a series of bash modules that you'll use to, to, to fetch your purposes. I mean, there's a yum module there. There's a full list I can show you at the end, or you can read your own on your own. Okay, <clears throat> uh, good question, boy. Okay, now let's write a little module. That's the interesting part. So see that module? It goes over there. How, how can you write something like that? I would like to have something that says, like, set the host name, buddy, okay? And then we'll say set host name, and a host name will be uh, Zumubu, okay? That's a great one. So how would we make that? Set host name doesn't exist with, uh, with uh, Ansible. So we're gonna write it, we're gonna put that in library underneath our thing, and we'll say set host name, okay? Directory. Okay, I have a little snippet. You grab that piece of code. That's where Python has a little advantage here. Okay, <coughs> Python mode. Okay, <coughs> you can inject a little part 
of Ansible's code right into your, see those comments here? When Ansible reads that, it'll inject that module comment, which declares Ansible module, which has the logic to decipher the, J, uh, the JSON, and then has those simple things to transfer a JSON. So it does help you, you know, with required, and it returns error messages, please set that thing. And it has a couple of things. So I, <clears throat> that's like kind of a stub of what you get. And if you use Ansible-doc, you can define some documentation and send it out to Ansible or for your own purposes. Okay, so what we do here would be quite, quite simple. We want one parameter, right? Host name. First thing we want to do, we want to know what's the actual host name. So we're going to fetch data. Look, do we need to change anything? Change it. Otherwise, well, not change it, but alert the control center that we don't want to do that. Okay, so current host name would be kind of run host name, right? And then we're going to grab standard output, strip the rest, and wanted host name will grab from the module. Parans host name. Okay, so that's the one here. And then we could verify if current host name equals wanted host name, then um, we'll output something, say change false. Got it? Otherwise, I'll exit, and that's loaded here by the module. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll run actually host name with the one we want. So wanted, okay, run, boom. And we'll module exit JSON change true with message change host name. Uh, format host name, don't want it. Got it? You think that'll run? I mean, it's quite simple, right? You check, that's all you need for idempotency. It's very simple, and you can write that in any language. Let's try that. You think it'll work? Oh, changed, okay. What about the host name in there? So it's Zumubu, what if I do it again? Great, so it did not change this time. You saw that going? First time, changed. Second time, okay, don't need to change anything. Okay, <clears throat> any questions? I thought I'd, 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 I'd be finished by then. No questions? Uh, if you have a set of hosts, how do you... Yeah, of course. So if you have a set of hosts, you'll go in, into your host. Let's say I want to do that and replicate that one here. Okay, we have this one here, and then, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Pumuzu. And if you run this, it'll run on both in parallel. So obviously, you might write concurrent stuff here, but it'll go everything in parallel. And you can have a kind of a rotate thing. So if you have 30 hosts, you can say, I want to do that by batch. Run the full thing for 15 hosts, and then continue with the 15 next hosts. OK? And um, so there's also ways to tag your things. You can, so let me show you in the zoo modes. Oh, one thing, that could get pretty full pretty fast, right? So what we'll do, we can put that in common.yaml. Okay, and copy all those tasks, put them here. How many space, you think? Uh, three. Okay, good. And then we'll have here an include. Uh, task common. So here nothing has changed, but you can regroup things and you call those ordered set of tasks at uh, one place. Okay? Now if you want to tag your, your things, you could say, okay, I want to repeat this one here. You could say, okay, when I update my app, I want to do that. Or you have a git module that's going to pull out a git. If you want to update your app, you don't want to go back and install all its dependencies and compile everything. Just update, I don't know, the git repository. So you tag certain steps and on the command line, you could go here and say tags, update app. And it's going to run only things, except gather facts, that are tagged in there. So you can like, kind of select just a subset of things to do certain operations, which is pretty cool. So this blows away fabric and all its uh, you know, funniness. Uh, also, if you want to install many things, let's like say, or we could say with items, boo, moo, zoo, and then use that here as item. And what will happen, so I'll do that without the tags, it'll go and execute these steps many times. See? And that'll be executed many times. And you can have full Python structure there. You, it's a YAML thing, so you can have dot item, dot blah, 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 and have full construct of data structures. Yes? I was wondering, let's say you need to, part of your update app, you need to restart the app. Is there some yeah, yeah, there's a notify system. I didn't go over that. So there's a system that has handlers. You can say, Handlers, whoops, handlers, and then include or define name or restart 
Bob, and that's going to be an action like service uh, name name Bob uh, state restarted. Okay, something like that. And then at some place you can have the task to say notify or like a shell boo something like that and then notify restart bob and that'll keep the order of notifications and at the end of the playbook it's going to call all those restarters and only once if they've been notified many times okay otherwise you can hard code hand code that with in your common things you could say okay the output from that or the output from i don't know authorize cure create user you can say register to this long variable and after that step I don't know if you can see that. After that step, you'll be able to, lo to use dollar this long variable to introspect anything that was uh, inside the JSON. So dot change, for example. And in the next step, you could have, there's another uh, little tag like that specific, that's only if. And you could put any Python conditional there, and it, you can verify, oh, do I need, has that change or that change, and then have conditionals to execute or not, like a shell to restart, you know, a command, a simple command. So there's a lot of flexibility there, okay? I think that's going to be it, unless there's some, some very, <laughs> yes, fast. Is this about the error handling? Yep. The error handling, if you want to debug, dash VVV, and then you can test your own modules. So you see everything is it's SCPing, running over there, downloading. You can have all the details, and you normally test the module itself. So you can have the JSON output, and, or any output, as a matter of fact, you know, going out through a standard out. You can do that remote or locally also. It's pretty well, it's pretty well uh, designed. The guy's pretty awesome. Yes, yes, am I all right? Yeah. Okay, fast, fast, come on. Okay.